welcome you okay welcome everyone to my presentation about gunsmithing I'm here with my family there's my mom who's recording my sister who's like next to her and my brother who's sitting on the ground and my dog Rex who's begging for food but uh yeah so this is my presentation about gunsmithing how many chair cops so the my background for gunsmithing is pretty much I was interested in guns um, and I found gunsmithing through YouTube and just internet research over time and I already knew some things about guns so I knew that I could do it one day so uh, that's how I found gunsmithing and how be, how I chose this topic in my presentation so this is an introduction to me I'm Kason and uh, I'm here because I have to be I live in this house so that's yeah and uh, I'm presenting because it's a thing I have to do. So my first like section is called Guns and Smithing, which is the only section because that's all the presentation is about. So guns have been around for a very long time. Uh, I don't even know when the first gun was like invented. And I don't know if you can really classify the first projectile weapon that uses gunpowder as a gun because technically like a single fire musket is what it was called but um yeah so they've been around a long time and they've gotten better uh, over the years by better they've become more accurate um, they've gotten uh, increased magazine size meaning they can hold more bullets uh, the bullets become bigger faster um, they've become cheaper as time's gone on to like manufacture I guess so they're more common nowadays and um, yeah so guns are essentially a tool because they serve a purpose and uh, tools often need repairing because sometimes when you use a tool a lot it starts to wear down, break down um, sometimes when you get the tool it's just not exactly how it's supposed to be so sometimes you gotta you know tune it so it's right <coughs> So that's where the gunsmith comes in. This is the guy that fixes the tool, um, and he uses all these tools to do it. So essentially, a gunsmith is uh, some dude, usually, uh, who starts out like in his own garage, just working on pieces for people. Um, <clears throat> technically, anybody can be a gunsmith. You have to. The only requirement is that you get an FFL, which is a federal firearms license, and essentially. It just that's just like access for you to be able to have um, other people's guns like if someone gives you their gun and you didn't buy it from them technically it's illegal for you to have it so but if you have an FFL it's legal meaning you're under temporary ownership of the gun so you can you know fix it and give it back to them so some examples of problems that come along with guns these are only two but I can spat off more there's uh, jamming, which can happen um, because, like, you know, the chamber is warped, or you know, you somehow put the wrong size bullet in there in the first place, which is kind of dumb, but it happens sometimes because some people just don't know what they're doing. Um, and that's a simple fix. You just have to dechamber the round, which usually can just mean taking off the top half of the, like, if it's a pistol, you just slide off the top slide, and then you, the round will fall out. Um, and it can occur because of warping. To fix warping, sometimes you need to replace a chamber, or you have to straighten it out, which you can do, but it's a lot, it's really hard and it has to be under like a specific circumstance. And then inaccuracy is another problem. Um, inaccuracy can be solved by straightening out the barrel. If a barrel is uh, warped or turned in any way, when the bullet comes out of the barrel, it will uh, just not path properly and it'll go in you know different directions to where you're not aiming because that's what happens um, and then sometimes your sights can just be off when you're like looking down a sight it can be crooked um, so when you shoot uh, you're not actually aiming at what you're going to be hitting because that's just what happens and in general guns aren't 100 percent to the t accurate but they're they're pretty accurate so if you're missing like 99 percent of the time then something's wrong you need to fix it call me just kidding i don't know anything yet <laughs> and then uh, there's some other problems like, um, or these, these are more like superficial problems, like the outside of the gun can just become worn, it can rust depending on what type of gun it is, there can be chips, um, the uh, you know magazine 
could, you know, when you try to put the magazine in, it, it could just like fall back out. That's just a locking problem and something that can be easily fixed. Um, just you have to, you know, take a look, see if anything's broken. If something's broken, you gotta fix that. And uh, yeah. So uh, machining is a very common skill among the more uh, high tier gunsmiths, the guys that make the big bucks doing it. Um, because it's just faster overall to repair a gun using machining and often in the process of making a gun They have to machine all the parts because they're so small and fine-tuned that it's impossible to like just forge them So machining is pretty much uh, You know a machine two machines in particular a mill and a press so a mill will essentially like it's for like drilling tiny holes. It's like a um, there's like a table and like a little drill in the top and you just pull this lever down and it spins and the drill drills a hole. And the press, it sounds like it's designed to press things but it's really not. Um, it's designed to, you take like a piece of like metal, a block of metal, and you hook it up on there and it spins really fast at a high RPM. I think about like 3K RPM or 8K RPM. And then you take a tiny little razor piece of metal and stick it in closer to the metal as it shaves off pieces. And um, that's how you use a, that kind of machine properly to form metal. So they have to form each individual piece for a gun using that. And um, <coughs> it's kind of a hard process. <coughs> and so this is a skill that most uh, gunsmiths pick up. Um, so hand tools are also essential even if you aren't going to be doing all your work by hand. Because there are some things that are so fine and minuscule that it's going to be really hard to get in there with some kind of machinery. And even like all the outside jobs like painting, uh, checkering, these are all superficial things that don't really affect the gun in any way to improve its performance, it just makes it look good. Um, you have to do these by hand because no machine can like properly do it. So hand tools are essential. Now, this is a bench and it's very, very blurry because of the picture. But essentially there's screwdrivers, um, there's hammers, mallets, visors, all this kind of stuff that's uh, like very important for those kind of superficial jobs and even interior jobs if needed. So these are some of the hand tools that I mentioned before. The screwdrivers, hammers, mallets, saws, um, the sanding blocks of vice and calipers. So a sanding block is like a block essentially and there's like sandpaper on it. Very simple. Um, calipers are used to measure like distance without, like, because calipers are more accurate than a ruler because a ruler is like, you know, it's man-made to be exactly 12 inches. With a caliper, you can measure tiny spaces by taking two little, like, they almost look like teeth on it and pulling them apart and, like, holding them on the edge of two things, and that's how you measure the distance between the two. Um, digital calipers are the uh, most like efficient and accurate type of calipers out there right now and they are pretty expensive so just be aware of that and a vise is something that you use to hold pieces still so you it's essentially like a clamp but it's designed to sit on the bench so when it sits on the bench um, it won't move it doesn't pivot unless you want it to so it's just perfect for holding it still because you can't like to do any hand work you can't hold it down with one hand and do this because you're just going to mess it up that's what a vise is for so this is a toolbox. You obviously got to have somewhere to keep your tools. If you just leave them lying around, uh, you, they can start to oxidize, meaning they rust. Um, that's really bad for your tools because then they'll be weaker and they'll break. Um, and if you have them you know, organized properly, then you can just find the tool that you need quicker. So toolbox really important. So that was my presentation. Are there any questions? Yeah, Do we have any questions? What was your question? What does RPM mean? Rounds per minute. How many times it spins like in a full rotation, 360 degrees, every minute? What? Um, can you list some type of guns? You want to know what, like, different subclasses of guns? Sure. Like, okay, so there's like the rifle, your standard issue rifle. Um, these are like... Uh, an AR-15, that's a standard issue rifle, it's something very simple. There's carbines, which are automatic, and technically, 
automatic weaponry is illegal in the United States, but you can own one if you have the proper licensing for it, or if you're intelligent and uh, don't want the government to know what you have, then just buy one anyways. Actually, don't do that. It's against the law. Um, then there's the SMG, which is just a smaller, almost rifle type, but I'd compare it more to a pistol because you can be more mobile with it. Um, it has smaller rounds around the size of your average pistol, around 9mm, 45 um, Sometimes, like, <laughs> sometimes you can get a 5.56 SMG, but uh, that's less common because that would be more considered in the rifle category. And there's shotguns, there's 12 gauge, 20 gauge, 16 gauge, things like that. Any more questions? What about the 69 gauge? There's no such thing <laughs> as a 69 gauge. <laughs> what gun is the easiest to work on? Like, like I guess, like, repair. To build? No repair. Oh. Okay, so probably the easiest to repair that, like the gun that will have the least problems. So when you, or like they'll have less problems when you own them. So if there's a problem, it's easier to fix. It's probably a pistol. They're just so much smaller and like simpler in design. So it's an easier repair. Another thing is most shotguns too, because there's not much moving parts to them. So if anything breaks, it's an easy fix. Any other questions? I was going to ask you, I thought like a press was kind of like a drill, so is it different, like that's called a drill press and a press is different than a drill press? Yeah, a drill, so a drill press is that thing that I said where you like, there's the drill and you push it down and it pushes through. But you called it something else, what would you call it? Oh, you it's called it a called mill. It a I thought you called it a mill or no, something. No, a mill, it was the other thing, I think I mixed them up. The mill is the one where the thing spins at like 8,000 RPM and yeah, sorry. And the drill or the press is the other thing they pulled off. Okay, so how long do gunsmiths stay in their profi profession? Um, so, I mean, if you wanted to talk about, like, when would be the optimal time for them to retire, um, the average gunsmith makes about 50000 to 60000 a year. So if you, I mean, if you count your cards right and do it properly, setting up a proper retirement thing, you could you know, probably leave by the time you're, let's say you started when you were like 21, you could probably leave by the time you're like 50. So, or you can leave earlier, it just depends on like how good you are and how much money you make. Where are some places you can work as, like to be gunsmith? So, some, some more like high paying common places to work are uh, the military. Um, but the thing about that is, uh, it's not like, it's not like, hey, I'm applying to be a gunsmith for the Marine Corps. It's like, now you gotta go into basic training, and then they gotta teach you how to be a soldier, and then if your you know score is high enough, then maybe you can be a gunsmith. Um, so it's kind of confusing there. Probably one of the better options is like at a police station. They constantly need repairs because they have firearms all the time. And they use them all the time, and uh, so you're gonna be in the armory a lot, probably fixing you know breaks on guns or. Possibly like testing out new guns and making sure that they work properly. Um, also, you'll probably be reloading amu ammunition a lot because they go through that sometimes. That's what happens. Another good place probably with the FBI. Um, I don't really like federal organizations, but they'll pay you a lot of money. So there's that. Um, and another like common place that's super common, but it doesn't really pay a lot of money is just working at the gun store. Um, it's just a good starting place, I would assume, and you can make a lot of money there. It just depends on how like popular the gun store is and how good of a smith you are. So, so, yeah. You mentioned that gunsmiths make on average like fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year. What's the most a gunsmith can make if they do it? Like, if they're a really good gunsmith? Um, I say the more professional, like some of the research that I looked into, the more professional you are, and like the, the more like concurrent, um, I guess, customers you have, you can probably make up to 100000 a year. It just depends on how good you are and like what kind of guns you're working on. So like your, your average gunsmith working in a gun store would probably make about 50 k uh, Someone working in an armory at the police station or in the military would make between 60 to 85 And then your guy that's, you know, working on guns for movie sets, for um, celebrities, for professional shooters, you can make a hundred thousand, hundred thirty thousand dollars. It just depends. So, like, 
say you're working in, like, for the government making new guns, like, better, like, weapons. Like, you're scientifically researching guns? Yeah. Like uh, as a gunsmith, you, you probably wouldn't be doing research on guns. You can build guns, but you probably wouldn't be researching them. Um, usually that's more of just, like, a scientific field. As a gunsmith, you could work with people who were, like, researching and developing new guns, but your job would probably be putting the guns together and testing it. It wouldn't be you're the one doing all the research on, you know, what kind of ammunition, uh, what kind of shape the gun should take, how many rounds we can fit into the barrel. Not, none of those things, you know. That would all be up to the scientists. Um, and it's something you can do as a gunsmith if you're, I guess, like really, really knowledgeable about your stuff. But usually they'll leave that up to some guy who went to college for seven years to become a doctor in the science of guns. Doctor in the science of guns. Yeah. <laughs> do you um, know what some of the best gun companies are to get guns from? Um, I would say... If you wanted like reliable, um, high like a, a reliable cheap gun, um, I would say like any AK manufacturer, because AK forty sevens like despite what people may say about it, just to be funny, um, they're actually really reliable and they hardly ever jam. And when they do, it's an easy just slide and the jam round just fires out anyways. So uh, those are pretty nice and cheap. Um, but like some really good companies that make really good guns, uh, Smith & Wesson, uh, Winchester, um, American Eagle, uh, Colt, Browning, Remington, kind of, it depends. Um, so those are all good ones out there that I know of. I lost my question now. Any other questions? Do gunsmiths get laid? <laughs> Do they get laid off? Uh, hardly ever, no. Any more questions? Nothing? Alright, well here are my credits. Um, these, are, these, these are the people that pretty much designed the slide, and so it's just a free download, pretty nice. These are some of um, the research like websites and videos that I had watched for my paper and whatnot, and then here's some more slides. Yeah. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching, and thank you for giving me a laugh every once in a while, but don't be stupid next time. <laughs> Good job. Clap. I can't clap.